So what is the transmissibility if, and, and maybe it's a good idea to imagine that this room is a grid block, and so, so far everything, you know, and then the room to the left of us and the room to the right of, the right of us are also <coughs> grid blocks. And so, so far we've only imagined or only considered a scenario where all of the material properties are constant in all of the grid blocks. Well, of course that's not true in a reservoir. You have variations in permeability <coughs> and, and other material properties. So if you imagine that the permeability in this room is 50 millidarcies, and the permeability in the next room over is 100 millidarcies, then what's the transmissibility at the wall where we're going through? More specifically, what, because remember, the transmissibility has, has the permeability in it. Right? And so specifically, what is the permeability, because we evaluate it at the wall, what should it be at the wall? So if it's 50 millidarcies in this room and 100 in that room, what do you think it should be at the wall? So, so 75, right? That's not a bad guess. Okay, let me ask you a different question. What if it were zero millidarcy in this room and 50 millidarcy in that room? Then what should the flux be? Well, I guess maybe a better thing, way to think of it is if it's 50 millidarcy in this room and zero in that room, so then we want to compute the flux going in or into that room, what would the permeability of the wall be? It would be zero. So it's not an average, it's not 25, right? It's zero. So we need a way to, we need to come up with a way that can give us zero when we need zero and some other average, something in between or otherwise, okay? Because zero is a, is a common and important case, right? I mean, this is sort of, we always assume that, well, not always, but most of the time we assume that there's no f flux and no flow at the edge of the reservoir. So one way to do that is to set the permeability in the surrounding grid blocks outside the reservoir to zero. So we want something that will give us n automatically no flux across, across the boundary. So if we have a one-dimensional reservoir that we break, break up into blocks, so this is block one and this is block n, between we have i, i plus 1, i minus 1, so that now each individual grid block has its own permeability, right? So remember, all the material properties for a grid block sort of live at its center, okay? So at the center of this grid block, we have k, we have k, to the i minus 1. At the center of this grid block, we have k to the i. And at the center of this grid block, we have k to the i plus 1. OK? But if we want to compute the flux between the i plus 1 and the i th grid blocks, right? let's write down what the flux is the right at the boundary, right at this boundary. We'd have k to the i plus one half times the area times mu. So we're going to assume everything but the permeability is just a constant. So we have that. And, and we're just going to solve this equation or rewrite it in terms of the pressure difference. Now, let's write, let's write this equation um, in terms of, or let's consider, the, let's consider the pressure difference from the center of, you know, again, using our room as a grid block, from the center of the room to the wall, right? So we want to look, we're going to write the pressure drop, we still have flow, 
It's the same flow going that way, but we're going to write the pressure drop from the center of the room to the wall, okay? And so we're going to write this equation on the half grid block. Right? So it's just to be clear, it's it's the same Q. Right? The Q goes from the center of the grid block to the center of the grid block. So it's the same Q. We're just going to write the pressure drop at the wall. Right? So that's going to be the pressure at the I plus one half minus I PI. So that's at the center. Same Q. All the other material properties are the same. Except now we have delta x over 2, right? Because we're only half, we're only writing it to the wall. Our whole grid block is delta x, half from the center to the wall is delta x over 2, okay? Times the area. Now what, what k should we use? You know, before we're writing it at right at the wall, so it's the k i plus a half. But now we're not, we're still in the grid block. And remember, the, the permeability in the grid block is the same everywhere. So what K should we use? If we're in the ith grid block, what K should we use? Ki. Ki. Okay. So now let's do the let's do the, the same thing, except this time we're gonna write it from the I plus one minus Pi plus one half. Right, so now we're in the we're in the I plus one grid block. We're in the next room, right? Writing the pressure drop from the center of that room to the wall. Okay? We share this wall. This wall is I plus one. The center of that room is I'm sorry, the, the, the wall is I plus a half. The center of that room is I plus one. Okay? So we're just gonna write the pressure drop across that. So it's the same Q, delta X over 2. Now, now we're in the next room over, the I plus 1 room. What K should we use? I plus 1 times A. All right? Now let's just add these two equations together. So if we add these two equations together, look at the left-hand side, the, the I plus one-halves are going to cancel, right? You have a plus and a minus, so they're going to cancel. So you're going to have PI plus one minus PI is equal to That guy. And if you want to rewrite it in terms of the flux, then
get that. And then just, just notice, right? It's kind of weird, but but you know, we have the pressure drop between I plus one and I is equal to this, and also the pressure drop between I plus one, uh, I plus one and I is equal to this, right? So since they're both equal to the pressure drop, these two things must be equal to one another, right? So given that those two things are equal to one another, can somebody tell me what k to the i plus 1 half is equal to? Because all the, I mean, the q, the, the, q, the mu, the bw, the a, the delta x, they all cancel, right? So then I, have, I can just have an equation that's k to the i plus 1 on one side and something else on the other. So that something else is this. Does anybody know what that's called? Yeah. That's the harmonic mean. Right? And so now, to answer your question, T at the I plus a half is equal to K I plus a half A. B W delta X. Where I don't need to do so. So where K I plus one half is the harmonic mean. Okay, so let's see. Uh, if the permeability in this room is fifty millidarcy, and this is say this is the ith the ith grid block is 50 millidarcy, and the permeability in the room next to us is zero. So the permeability in the i plus one room is zero. What's one over zero? Infinity, right? Infinity plus anything is infinity. And then the inverse of infinity is what? Zero. So I'd get zero at the wall. Okay. Now what about the other answer? Does somebody have a calculator out? Cool. You have a calculator? So what about the other example? It's uh, 100 millidarcy in the ith room, 50 millidarcy in the i plus 1 room. What does it come out to? 100 in this room, the ith room. So 1 over 100 plus 1 over 50. Inverse times 2. 66.67. Okay, so it's not it's not uh, 75, right? It's not half, um, but at least it's in between, right? I mean, it makes sense. It's not 20, right? It's not 500. It is in between, so it sort of passes the sanity check. Um, but but that's that's typical. The harmonic average will always be lower than the the, the, the standard algebraic mean or standard mean. 